You're listening to the Wheeler's Dog Podcast. This is episode 52. Hey, and welcome to the Wheeler's Dog Podcast. My name is Eugene B. Sims, and it's 924 Sunday morning. And at 8.07 a.m., there was an earthquake. Yeah, here in North Carolina. I live just south of Clemens in northern Davidson County of North Carolina. At first, when it happened, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sitting there doing my morning constitutional and just a, a, a pocket of gas just burst out. And at the same time, that's when the earthquake happened for about 20 seconds. And I thought I had raked the plumbing. Yeah. But seriously. No, we were down at my father-in-law's house. Every Sunday morning at 7 o'clock, we all gather. We just kind of shuffle on in Sunday morning at his place for the Hampton Hellcats Sunday morning breakfast. Hampton Hellcats is more or less a, uh, a hangout club with Bait and Jim that they started many, many years ago in their teens, preteens, that sort of thing. And so we just kind of adopted the name. And every morning, they've been doing it since, gosh, the 90s, the early 90s. The only time they don't do it is when somebody's out of town. Like, heck, even when Jim goes out of town, we're, we're cooking up a storm down at his place. The last time Jim was out of town, we, Bait and I, were the only people that showed up. Randy usually shows up. Uh, my brother-in-law Andy's there. Bait. Last week, our neighbor Richard was there, and Matthew was there this morning. Rare treat to have Matthew with us. Uh, he brought some farm fresh eggs for us to uh, enjoy, and we're just kind of sitting around the table, chatting. Everybody kind of buried into their own phone, listening to music on Pluto TV, and. Um, all of a sudden the house started rattling for like 20 seconds. At first, we thought Jim had something in the washing machine <laughs> that, you know, needed to be shifted around or something. And then we're all just kind of like, huh, was that an earthquake? So I got on the phone and sure enough, uh, Trev Allen, who has called into the show before, he works at WTOB, he, he posted something on Snapchat, we had a 5.1 magnitude earthquake south-southeast of Sparta, North Carolina. And my stepson, Sam, the oldest, is at Raven Knob, which isn't that far away. So I wonder what kind of taste of that that thing that we had this morning. I wonder how it felt to him being closer to it than all of us. And from what I saw, it was felt all the way to Greer, South Carolina, all the way to Raleigh, Charlotte, uh, I don't know how far up north. I haven't seen anybody chime in on that one to see how far north or west that they could feel it. And that's actually the second earthquake that we've had this morning. I looked, and uh, when I first looked it up, it, it hadn't made the news because I was like within a minute. And the thing that I saw was 1.57 a.m., same place, Sparta, North Carolina, so that second one was an aftershock. So I'm wondering if we'll have a, another one sometime today. Maybe we will. Hopefully my wife will be awake for it because it was a 5.1 magnitude. And according to some sources, it's the strongest earthquake we've had in North Carolina since 1916. And Chiggs, who just walked in with her coffee... She totally missed it. You missed it, Chiggs. I did. I missed it. I'm, I'm so disappointed. I should have gotten up. I slept through the whole thing. Yeah. Now I, I can say I could sleep through an earthquake. And you uh, you were just talking to the mill. Did she, was she awake for it? No. She missed it too? Yeah. No. Yeah. And the last one that I really remember, I was working at WSJS and it happened in the afternoon. I was doing an air... Well, I wasn't doing an air shift. I was babysitting the board for one of the shows. I think it was Dave Ramsey or something like that. And it felt like somebody was shaking the building underneath me. Now, the studio where WSJS's main studio was, 
it's above a parking garage. So I thought maybe somebody might have hit one of the supports. So as soon as I felt it rumbling like that, <laughs> I shot up out of my chair and I ran to a different part of the building where I knew I had more support than what was above the parking garage. And then everybody came out of their offices, you know, looking around at each other. Everybody feel that? And I was like, oh, that was an earthquake? Yeah. So I didn't really get to enjoy it like I did this morning. I must admit, it was kind of fun. I mean, it's just, it felt like Jim's washing machine just hit a violent spin cycle. It was just like, and he's got this flag on his wall, and even it was moving. It was just kind of bizarre, and that's what we all thought, that maybe his washer was going, but then it all kicked in, and it dawned on us that we had to walk by the washer to get into the kitchen, and it wasn't running then, so it, we all just kind of, yeah, that's an earthquake. So again, 1.57 a.m., 8.07 a.m., so maybe we'll have another after a shock within the next eight hours. I don't know. Is that how that goes? Aftershocks kind of occur shorter periods of time. I'm not sure. I'm not Californian. We're kind of new to this in North Carolina. Yeah, there's plenty of fault lines in North Carolina, but you know, I I just we don't we don't experience quakes that much. Did it shake the breakfast foods? Uh no, the breakfast foods made it okay. Um there was there was no problem with the breakfast foods. And we weren't really looking at that when it happened. We were just kind of like looking at the the walls and, and looking at each other like, what in the honey baked hell is this? But yeah, so we survived the quake of 20, 2020. Conversations on the Rocks is the podcast where the guest determines the topic. And it's hosted by me, Kristen Dokas. Download the latest episode from your favorite podcast service, grab your favorite cocktail or other beverage, settle in, and let's get to know each other. And the last Friday in July, I finally took up my boss's invitation. Well, one of my boss's invitation, shop manager at the U-Haul Center in Raleigh. They have like a lunch, they grill, they do all kinds of things for lunch, like the last Friday of the month. I didn't really notice this so much at the shop down in Charlotte. I think one time I saw somebody grilling out, but it's like a monthly tradition with them. So I got there with a truck and they were like, hey, you know, I don't really have anything for you to drive back to Winston-Salem. Uh, you know, we're waiting on a part to be delivered and installed. Some sort of a sensor. I forgot what it was. CO2, CO2. I'm not O2, an oxygen sensor or something. And he's like, you know, we got about 45 minutes for that and uh, till you can be able to go. Why don't you just go ahead and have lunch? Well, I'm not good with lunch and dinner invitations unless you're, you're eating someplace where you can order from the menu. You know what I mean? It's like I don't really accept dinner invitations ever. Because I am such a picky eater. As my wife says, I eat like a toddler. Go ahead, say it, Chiggs. Yep, she's not even paying attention. She's sitting behind me, but she's got her face in Facebook and social media. And that's okay. I'm not not picking on her. What? I'm sorry. How how do I eat? Fast. Okay. Like a toddler. There we go. That's what we're looking for. I didn't realize I ate that fast. Well, Um, I don't. I mean, I'm not a Tim Beeman eater. No. That guy eats like, you know, he's been in prison. Like, somebody's <laughs> going to, to get his meal before he can finish it. But, <laughs> anyway, I, I don't accept them because I'm such a picky eater. And I was taught at an early age, and I had to do this because, you know, we got in... My parents would take up any Denver, dinner invitation, you know, within reason. And, of course, you know, the rule was, I don't care what they shit out there, boy, you just eat it. Ask for seconds. <laughs> you know, it's that kind of deal. So I, I just, I learned how to eat stuff that I didn't like, which was basically swallowing my food like a snake. There was no chewing involved. It was just like, oh, oh yeah, this is great. 
But I don't accept dinner invitations because of that. Because, you know, I'm a picky eater. There's lots of things. People people are just you know, crazy about throwing onions and peppers and, 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 and vegetation in all kinds of dishes. So it's, it's just not for me because, for one, I don't like the taste of onions and peppers. Especially those green peppers. God, they're nasty. I don't know how people in their right minds eat that stuff. It's just, ugh. I mean, I'm getting a body shiver just thinking about it. So anyway, I asked my boss man. I was like, okay, well, what are we having? And he said, grilled chicken or grilled pork chops. I said, what about sides? Well, there's some uh, baked beans and corn and uh, biscuits. Well, not biscuits, rolls. And I said, uh, and beverages? Well, there's water. <laughs> yeah, they spring for all this, uh, this, this lunch. Go all out, but kind of fall short on the beverages. But hey. I, because I know before that he's had, you know, sandwiches and stuff. And I was thinking, you know, pre-made sandwiches. I didn't know. And so I, I, I have passed on every lunch invitation except for this one. I said, well, you know, what the heck? You know, I got to wait around for this. I might as well just have lunch on the clock. What the hell? And I had a grilled chicken breast. Boneless. Fantastic. Seasoned to perfection. Eric is a, a good chef, and he had a, you know, a t-shirt that made, or he had a t-shirt made for his uh, cooking abilities there at 368. And the weird thing that I noticed was in this break room, and, and I have worked, you know, warehousing before. I used to work for Capitol Records at their distribution center in Greensboro, and there, it seems to be true in just about everywhere that you have kind of like a blue collar type work environment. Whenever you go to the break room, it's it's not very thought provoking television that's on. Yeah, when I first sat down, we were watching the news, and some tropical depression was about to to hit Florida, and it you know could impact North Carolina. As a matter of fact, it did. We got a little bit of rain from it. But the thing was, we were watching this news and information of the local, you know, I think it was a CBS affiliate. As soon as they went to commercial, boom, somebody changed the channel to reruns of Jerry Springer. And it was about these two cousins. One cousin uh, apparently wanted to get back at her husband, so the best way to do it was to sleep with her cousin's husband. And she didn't mean for it to happen, but then she bragged about it, how he jumped at the chance to bed her standing up in, in like a bathroom. So, yeah. So we were watching that. And then when that Springer went to a commercial, somebody flipped it again. I don't know who was in charge of the TV, but gosh, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just that kind of blue collar atmosphere, but but people are just ugh, watching crappy stuff and and flipping channels and stuff. It just it's something I've always noticed. Like at Capitol Records, yeah, we we watch all kinds of crappy TV like that and Jenny Jones was on at the time. And Jenny Jones had a, a call out to viewers, you know, are you in love with a member of a, another race? Would you like to come on to our show? So there was this girl I worked with, Angelina. I said, hey, Angelina, what do you say you and me go to Chicago and we get on this show? We just play it up to the hilt, you know, just, you know, you're there. You don't know why you're there. And all of a sudden they bring me out. And if you want, you can slap me around. <laughs> we can really play it up. And, uh. She she was not interested at all in that idea. I'm like, but it's a free trip to Chicago. Yeah, they put you up. We can see all kinds of things. Yeah, the Bunker Hill, the Eiffel Tower. You can see all that kind of stuff. But no, she wasn't hip to it. But I don't know. Are, are break rooms like that? I just, 
I just don't get it. And then there was this one guy. He was upset because someone was sitting in his spot. Yes. Apparently, the shop there has a uh, daycare-like atmosphere to where one guy feels entitled to have his spot. And the guy's like, look, man, I don't care if this is your spot. I'm sitting here. I didn't know it was your spot, but I am not getting up in the middle of my meal just so you have this spot. And the other dude was a little bit taller than the guy, so he just kind of sauntered off to some other table with somebody else sitting there and just kind of muttered under his breath. I'm like, good God, what in the hell? You want extra episodes of the Willer's Dog Podcast? Of course you do. No one in their right mind would pass up an opportunity to get a bonus episode every week. Not every once in a while, but one every week. Just go to patreon.com slash Wheeler's Dog and get into the dog share for just four bucks. Four bucks every month unlocks all the audio. You can even listen with the Patreon app for tablets and smartphones. Patreon.com slash Wheeler's Dog to contribute. It's the best gift that you could ever give yourself, really. Maybe. And yesterday we had a cause for celebration. Yes, indeed. I don't know if you remember this, but my wife ordered some lumber, had Sam, the oldest, order some lumber, and he got it with one week before he had to go to Raven Knob Camp, which is this huge Boy Scout camp near Sparta, North Carolina, where the earthquake happened, or two earthquakes happened this morning. He said he felt it. And so it rained the, just about the whole week before, you know, we could even get started on the, the deck. So Jamie, some of her family came over, her cousins, you know, Wade and, and Ashley and, and Chuck, her husband, along with their daughter. She's how old, Chigs? 11 months. 11 months old. Got, got a head of hair like Charo. I mean, she was born with a head of hair like, like Lady Godiva. It, it was it pretty, pretty amazing stuff and thick hair too, not that thin wispy baby stuff, you know. But they noticed that all the lumber was, you know, sitting on the deck that had all the old boards pulled off of it. Now Sam and I, mostly Sam, we pulled off the boards, and uh, that that was fun. Lots of manual labor, but. After we got about halfway done, we discovered how to do it quicker and easier. Yeah, trial and error. So Chuck said something about coming over, helping us finish it. So he came over Friday along with Ashley and the baby. They started working on him and Matthew started working on the deck, putting it together, you know, putting the boards on. Uh, it just sort of happened. So we weren't really prepared. We were ill prepared. I would have had the the deck screws had I known. I would have gone out and got them for them. But they got started late uh, Friday, putting the deck down, and they spent the night and they started up. Chuck was up at seven a.m. working on it again while everybody else was just snoozing away. Me, Matthew, and I felt totally, totally emasculated because. My knee was giving me hell. I've got some sort of arthritic condition in there. The knee was giving me hell on Friday afternoon after work. And then all day yesterday, it wasn't very, very cool. Uh, It was quite painful, actually. I'm starting to wonder if it's something worse than arthritis. But, hey, you know, some days it feels good, like this morning. It's okay, And but then the Achilles tendon over here on the right leg... It's gotten a little better, but then there was some, like some muscle thing going on this morning. I finally worked out a little bit. So, yeah, this getting old really sucks. But I felt emasculated because I wasn't really helping. I was helping what I could. And plus, the other thing is, I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't when it comes to anything handy like that. Like, I knew that it was like 10 feet. Sam did all the measurements. Uh, I knew that the slats or the, the boards had to be 10 feet. I would have measured them all 10 feet and cut them all. But no, Chuck was measuring little by little. He'd put three down and then go back and measure. And there's like 10 feet, three-eighths of an inch, I think was the, the, or maybe five-eighths. 
where it got the uh, the most. And see, I, I would have not been happy with the outcome that I would have had. Quite happy with what MP and Chuck did. And so it's 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 fantastic. And that's right. Bate, Bate came over a little bit Friday, too. And he helped out, and he was there. He wanted to be there first thing in the morning to help out. And and so he came and gave us a little hand with it. So, again, I appreciate everyone's help. I felt really like a like a bum sitting there watching them sometimes. And then I'd help them clean up, and then i stack some of the... Uh, the scrap pieces that we're going to use for the, there's like a little step where Chiggs and I got married. We got married back there. So I want to save a, I want to save a board. What? June 12th. You remembered that. After I've pounded it into her head all these years, but all these years being four. <laughs> yeah, really? You can't say that yet. But, you know, it's, it's really cool to have, have that back because it's back behind the pool. It's the furthest place out in our yard where this deck extends out. And we've had it closed pretty much the last couple of years because if you're not walking where the nails are or the, the screws were before, there's a good chance you could have went through one of the boards just you know, like, just a leg just go straight down, right through a hole. So you had to watch your step. And that's also a place that you know, whenever we have any kind of scraps or anything that needs to be thrown away, but we're kind of concerned whether or not the, the dump will hassle us about what we're throwing away, we just toss it back behind the deck into the into the other property owner's land. So that's it happens. It is horrible. But, you know, that's how we got rid of all the uh, old uh, decking that we took up. We just tossed over there. Hey, it's it's wood. It'll break down. It'll make some uh, some nice places for the rabbits who have come back. Yeah, the guy that owns that property back behind us doesn't care. That's right. The guy that owns the property, he doesn't care. Doesn't care. And that would be our father-in-law. Or my father-in-law, her father. So anyway, today I got a plan to move at least one of the tables back there. We used to love sitting back there in the back corner next to the uh, box elder what is it yeah you're right. a box elder tree and we like to sit back there because it's nice and shaded until about two o'clock in the afternoon when sun starts sneaking in there but uh, we're kind of looking forward to getting that back into the pool area and and even in the uh, the fall and stuff when the pool's not open we'd go back there just to kind of you know get away further away from someone here not mentioning any names <clears throat> Mill. but um we're looking forward to to doing that this afternoon getting that back into shape and getting out there hanging out as a matter of fact we probably got to get into some pool time real soon here chigs yeah i want to move the swing back there too because the other thing is if we have an aftershock we could, well, not just that. We could see what the quake does to the pool. Yeah. You know, does the pool shimmy and sway? Does water splash out? When I got home, I, I took a look around the pool to see if water had splashed out. It didn't do anything like that. So, it wasn't that violent. So, yeah. Anyway, folks, I do appreciate you listening to the podcast. And before we go, we got a phone call from Associate... Producer Tim Beeman, uh, even though it was covered, Chase covered it in episode 50, but I talked about it in 49 about, well, I'll let, I'll let Beeman tell you in this phone call. 336-422-6006. That is the Wheeler's Dog Speak Line. Eugene, this is your chunky, annoying, foodie friend, Tim. Just letting you know that Tomato pie is not a dessert. Tomato pie is a savory dish, just like a chicken pot pie or chili pie. And for the listeners who are not averse to tomatoes and all the wonderful things that they are, Moselle's downtown here in Winston-Salem has a fantastic tomato pie that I recommend for many people to try. Now, 
I know you won't try it because, you know, you don't think they're done in the middle. I understand. However, I think uh, you might actually enjoy a tomato pie if you didn't actually know what it was. That's all I had to say. Until later, ta-ta for now. Yeah, Beeman, I'm sorry I missed the call the first time around. Actually, uh, I noticed it right after Chiggs and I had cut the celebratory 50th episode. And so I'm sorry I didn't get to it sooner, but hey, we got to it. So, yes, I have learned the hard way from this woman telling me that it's not a dessert. I thought it was. It's not a dessert. I, I did not know. I, well, it's okay. Then. I don't eat such things. I'm not interested in those things. You are forgiven for being uh, wrong. Thank you, thank you. So if you want to call me out on anything, uh, call him out. Yeah, he needs it. yeah. As a matter of fact, I was talking to Dory just yesterday how her mother Paula called me out on on uh, sounding like a condescending jerk, <laughs> and I really appreciate that. So anything, questions, comments, whatever. The Wheeler's Dog Speak Line, 336-2... I'm sorry, I was getting ready to give my phone number. 336-422-6006. Leave a message. Shoot a a text message there if you're shy about talking, you know, on the podcast. So, text messages are cool, too. And I'm getting on out of here now. Again, the masses, the episodes, it's changed. It's going to be on the evens now. And then the Patreon only are going to be on the odds. And I did cut a Patreon only the other day. That was posted Saturday before the week went out. So I kept my promise of one bonus episode every week. So I got it out under the wire, so to speak. So awesome. I was, Good I was job. very, very happy about that. So I talk a little bit about the Nonconformist Cult Radio Show. Back on the airwaves in the triad. At WTOB 980 AM and 96.3 FM, I believe they are on the TuneIn app. You can listen online at WTOB980.com. And again, the show takes place at like midnight, Sunday, Monday morning. So, Monday morning at midnight to 2 AM. They purposely did that because they're not quite sure how people are going to take the non car Formus Call Radio Show. No, actually, that's not true. Uh, I, it's just something I wrote for a promo. But, uh, you know, it's we're stretching its legs until this COVID-19 thing's over and I can put my plan into place to get the non-conformist Call Radio Show on at a better hour and also syndication. That's right. We're thinking about syndicating this joker. So, Chig, say bye to everybody or you got something to say? I do. I do. You know, I hope this is not the case with the show because I know it's going to be awesome. But, you know, my mom always told me that only bad things happen after midnight. That's not true. It is nonconformist, though. Well, that is true. So it it would buck against that. If you dare stay up and watch. Listen. Yeah, if you're tough enough. If you listen. Listen. Uh, Yeah, Not watch. (laughs) (laughs) Watch. Watch. Watch the ceiling fan while you listen. (laughs) It's like, uh, that reminds me of when I was working at WSJS, we'd get phone calls from the the old folks. I'm talking about the old folks. They would come in and be like, I don't know why y'all run such tiny writing on the bottom of the screen. (laughs) And I said, "Uh, uh, ma'am, are you calling WXII? I'm calling the TV station. And I said, well, you know, uh, SJS, they changed it to WXII, the TV station, back in the early 70s. <laughs> and I looked up the number real quick and gave her the number so she could call them and bitch about how small the writing was. <laughs> but yeah, occasionally we'd get old WSJS TV watchers calling calling the radio station complaining about what they're seeing on their TV. I always thought that was just kind of funny because... You know, I don't know if it was like an episode, you know, like Alzheimer's and things. Because, you know, sometimes people remember stuff that happened so way back, but they can't remember their own kid's name. That happens to me. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll keep the writing large on the show. Say, say bye, Chiggs. Bye. 
and we will talk at you patreon only episode 53 ta let's hit the pool Let's hit the pool.